Good afternoon. Uh, today we are going to speak about conversation skills. In today's lecture, we will study what all things are necessary to make your conversation an interesting one, how should you communicate with the other person and what all things you should take care of while you are conversing with the other person. So, let us begin with our lecture. Children, there are certain things that make a conversation a good one. And to make a conversation a good one, we need to take care of certain things. And in that, the first thing is invitation and inspiration. As you can see over there, I have written that great conversations need both invitation and inspiration. Now you must be wondering, what is invitation and what is inspiration? Let us move ahead. A conversation based entirely around invitations can sound like an interview, nothing but questions and answers. Very true. See children, uh, when you are conversing with other person, it should be such that the other person is likely to share more and more information with you. Now for that, he must have an area of interest in whatever you are talking about. For example, the conversation should be an inviting one. When you say, how are you? The other person will respond in a very simple manner, I am fine, thank you. Now, in this, it is just sounding like a question and answer. You will again ask, how was your weekend? The other person will say, it was good. Now, in this, the invitation is missing, the inspiration is missing. So, you need to take care that if the other person is not willing to continue with the conversation or if the other person is not finding it interesting, you will have to inspire the other person or and be inspired at your end also to converse with that person. And for that, you have to add on. Like when you ask, how was your weekend? You can add and say, my weekend was very good. I spent my weekend at such and such place. I watched a movie. It was very interesting. The storyline was very good. I found it very interesting. How about you? Now, when you say that, the other person has already gotten information that, okay, he is asking about the weekend and what did you do in that weekend. So, when you ask the other person about the weekend, the other person will give you the information and will speak and like you, as you have said. So, we say that in order to have a good conversation, it should have an invitation, it should be inviting in the sense that the other person feels something to be contributed to that and it should be inspiring, inspiring at both the ends, that is at your end as well as the other person's end. Guidance and invitation move hand in hand, as you can see. When you are inviting other person, when you are inspiring other person, by that what you are trying to do is, you are trying to build an intimacy and along with that a flexibility. Now, when we say it is intimacy, intimacy means you are trying to develop a kind of association with the other person so that the person feels comfortable in sharing the information with you. At times, when you are very rigid, when you are asking questions or when you are asking in a manner that the person becomes very intimidated or the person is very scared to answer, you will not be able to share the information properly. So in that case, you have to develop an intimacy with that person, make the person comfortable, make the person free so that he shares information with you. At times we feel that the conversation is becoming very very boring. The person is not contributing. However hard I may try to inspire the other person, the person is not ready to share the information. So for that we need to really work out and we really need to find out the areas how you can be a good conversationalist, a conversationalist who is able to inspire the other persons to speak even if they are not willing to. Because at times you will find people who are very willing to share the information, very willing to cooperate. 
cooperate with you and move ahead with the conversation. But our problem arises with those persons who are very rigid, who are not very flexible and who are not ready to share the information that is there with them. So for them, we need to deal a little with them a little more strategically and show them that you are just trying to help them so that they converse with you and slowly and gradually once they start conversing with you, you will find that the rigidity that they were having when you started with the conversation would be gone and they would be intimate to you, more intimate to you, they would be flexible and the, the conversation would be a real conversation in the real sense. Let us just talk about what are the characteristics that make a good conversation. We ha I have jotted down a few points and we will talk about it in detail with each and every point. We, the first thing that we say is good conversation is interesting. When we say interesting, by interesting we mean that it must stimulate or generate interest in the other person. It must attract the other person and he or she must be able to contribute something to that. Only then your conversation would be an interesting one. In other words, we say that it must arouse the listener. Arouse the listener in the sense that the listener must be motivated to speak to you. The listener must be motivated to share his thoughts, ideas and opinions with you. So, when you do that, your conversation would be an interesting one. So, when you are conversing with any person, you need to first find out the area of interest of that person. For example, if you are communicating with a teenager, if you are communicating with a student, you need to find out his area of interest, talk about his or her hobbies, talk about the books that person has read, if he or she has an interest in reading, talk about what all things that person likes. On the contrary, if you are talking to some professionalist, you have to then find the area of interest of that person. For example, if you are talking to a singer, if you are having a conversation with a singer, you must talk about his area of interest, that is singing. So you can add on to what all songs he or she has sung, what all songs are there in the pipeline to come out, or what all things are there that you would like to share about. In this manner, you will make the conversation an interesting one because the listener will have an area of interest and he or she would readily contribute to that and you will not find it difficult to move ahead or to cope up with the inhibitions that the other person has. Next we say conversation should be progressive. A good conversation should be progressive. By progressive we mean that it should unfold in a natural manner, in a gradual manner. It should not be a deliberate effort on both the parts, that is the sender and the receiver. We spoke about it earlier also. The sender and receiver should not be in a move or should not be deliberately conversing about something. The deliberate effort should not be there at all whenever the person is conversing. So you should be very very careful about that and for that the, the topic that you have chosen for conversation should be a gradual one, should be a one that unfolds in itself one after another. It should be a continuous process and the conversation that you have, to, uh, the topic that you have chosen, it should be such that the person feels uh, interested into that as we had already said that it should be interesting. At the same time, it should flow in a gradual manner. That is, it should have a beginning, middle and an end. And that should be very, very gradual. Whenever we are speaking, we keep on speaking and speaking without thinking about what we are speaking. But if you pay a little attention to your conversation, you will then know that when is the beginning, when is the middle and when is the end. It is very important that you know that how to end a conversation. 
The end again is as important as the beginning. Your end should not be abrupt or it should not be such that the person with whom you are conversing feels awkward. So you need to take care that when you are speaking to somebody, when you are conversing with the other party, you should be very smooth, you should be very gradual and the conversation should unfold in a very very natural and a casual manner. Only then it would be a good conversation. We say that the conversation should be instructive. By instructive we mean that there should be some kind of information to be shared. And as is written, as I have quoted over there, a Chinese proverb says that a single conversation across the table with a wise man is worth a month's study of books. I repeat, a single conversation across the table with a wise man is worth a month's study of books. By that we mean that there is so much of information that you get when you are speaking to the right person. When you are speaking to the person who has got knowledge. So when you are speaking, please try and share something that is worthwhile. Try and share that really adds to information of the other person. That really adds to the knowledge of the other person. It should have a content. As we have already said, your conversation must be substantial. There should be something substantial in that. If you are having some substance in your conversation, automatically the other person will be interested in listening to you and reciprocating to you. And for that it is essential that you read. We have discussed the importance of reading in the previous lectures and therein I told you if you remember children that it is very important for us to read and that reading will help us in our spoken skills. When we are speaking with somebody we can always refer to what we have read because our food would come from there only. So in order to be a good speaker, in order to be a good conversationalist you must also read and jot down some points, some small stories, some proverbs, some idioms that you can share with the other person and that will make your conversation not only interesting but at the same time worthwhile. We say that a good conversation should be pleasant. By pleasant we mean it should be pleasant when a person speaks to you at the same time when the other person listens to you. In both the cases it should be pleasant. pleasant. And in that we mean you should sound very friendly. At the same time you should be assertive and confident about whatever you are speaking or discussing. Now when you are being uh, confident automatically you will speak something good. And by that we mean when you are speaking something good, you would be uh, versatile in that. Versatile in the sense that the person will enjoy it. Your conversation should be such that it interests everybody at the same time. The other person enjoys it as, the, as and when you move ahead with the conversation. Now it is very important for us to understand that apart from being pleasant, we must also have a pleasing personality. And for that we need to take care of, of our clothing, how we look, about our body language, about our gestures, about our overall personality. And then only your appearance would be pleasant, your conversation would be pleasant and what you speak. That is your intonations. You should neither be too loud nor should you be too mum. That is too uh, slow or you should say very, you speak, you are speaking very softly just mumbling that the other person is not able to understand. So a pleasing conversation should be a little loud, confident and in a way that the person finds it very very natural and he or she 
is likely to speak to you. A good conversation is free. Free. Free doesn't mean that you are free to speak anything to anybody. You are free to speak about the bad words or you are free to speak, free to speak about anything that comes to your mind. By free means that it should be free from all the prejudices. It should not be a one that the other person feels that is hindering or it is entering into his or her personal zone. Now when you are talking to a person, he or she must get an area of comfort in speaking to you. And for that you will have to give a little freedom to that person. When you give that freedom, you should also take care that when the person is speaking, whatever that person is speaking, it adds to your conversation, it adds to his conversation skills. At the same time, you maintain the decorum of the conversation. You should not be rude. You should not take on such words that are very derogatory, something that a person feels bad about, something that a person is not ready to share with. Now you need to understand all these things when you are looking at that person, you will understand from the person's body language that there are certain things, there are certain areas where the person will not like you to speak upon. Generally, they are our personal zones, our personal experiences or something related to our very um, good friends or our colleagues that, the, that everybody is not very comfortable discussing about. So you need to take care that when you are speaking to the other person and when you feel that the other person is not comfortable with that topic, immediately switch to another topic that makes the person more comfortable and free in sharing with you. The tone of voice is another thing that we need to take care of. That is, it should neither be too high. Your intonations should be balanced. That is, the rise and fall that you have in the tone, they must be very, very balanced. You should not be screaming. You should not be shouting. At the same time, you should not be just whispering. So you need to understand that when you are stressing at some point, when you are stressing out an important point in your conversation, your voice should be a little louder than the normal pitch. When you are speaking about a fact, it should have a little low pitch. It should be clear, but at the same time, it should be loud. At least audible to the other person. By, by loud, we mean it must be audible to the other person. At times, we speak and we don't speak clearly. That is, we chew the words. We feel that, okay, it would be understood by the other person. No. We need to take care that whether we are sounding absurd, whether it is such that the other person is not able to understand, Whenever I am speaking, is it that I am always having a very high tone? I am not able to control my pitch? Or am I taking care of intonations? All these things will come with practice. So you have to practice conversation with your friends, with your colleagues, with your classmates. That will help you because when you practice it, you actually come to know how you are speaking and you will automatically take care of the intonations that is the rise and fall in the tone. Next that is very important and we have always been stressing in, the, in our classes the importance of body language. Body language certainly plays a very very vital role and when you talk of body language I always said in the earlier classes also I quoted that it is 55% body language, 38% intonations and only 7% words. Now by 38% thir intonations that is what we discussed earlier the rise and fall in the tone by that the person is able to communicate a great deal but through the body language he or she is communicating more. You can automatically, when you are conversing with the person, know that the person is interested in speaking to you or not. You can look at the eyes of a person and understand through the eyeball movements that 
whether that person is finding the conversation interesting or not, whether he is being bored by that conversation or whether he is just expecting that conversation to be finished. So take care of the body language. As a speaker, you should try and have a very good body language. You should take care of your posture whenever you are speaking. You, are, you should have a straight posture, stand properly, use your hand movements, use your eyeball movements and create a genuine interest. When you will be genuinely interested in speaking to others, your body language will reflect that. But when you are speaking just for a formality sake, your body language will also reflect that. So take care that when you are speaking, you are genuinely interested in speaking, you are genuinely interested in sharing with others. Take care that you have a little more of uh, jokes, you have a little light-hearted conversation, we say. That is, some stories you quote, you quote some uh, personal experiences or as some experiences of great people that you have read and you continue your conversation with that. Now when you lose all these things, your conversation would automatically be an interesting one and people will love to listen to you. When they will love to listen to you, they will also love to share their knowledge with you. Now when it happens at both the ends, that is at the sender as well as the receiver, you will be a good conversationalist. The quality of a good conversationalist lies in the ability to make the conversation a lively one, a interesting one, a one that everybody likes and a person is able to share his or her thoughts with that person in a very very comfortable manner. I hope you have understood the conversation skills or the points that are needed to make a conversation good or interesting and if there is anything that you have not understood, please let me know. I would be very happy to answer to that. That's all for today. In the next lecture, we will be talking about the barriers to the conversation skills, the do's and don'ts of the conversation and what all points you should remember while you are conversing with other persons. Thank you very much.